what I've decided to do is I have a couple of these lying around and these are becoming a far more uh, available commodity and that is a PC power supply so um, that's what I'm going to try next I'm just going to mount my heating element I think I'll mount it on the side like that and make sure the fan is blowing the way that you want to their induction fans so it's a matter of just taking it out and turning the fan over to get it to uh, to rotate the, the right way whether you want the air blowing out that way or blowing in and blowing out that way but I'm going to set mine up like that I think there's lots of information available on the web but if you get one of these pardon me I'll just move this a little bit if you get one of these and just plug it in you'll probably find it won't work and that is because there is a, a socket on the plug here that says it was labelled as PS on. The power supply will actually put 5 volts to that and if it, if it measures 5 volts there it will not turn on. So we need to short that out down to one of the earth terminals or one of the ones that says common. I've done that with just a very, very uh, simply with a wire loop. There's the plug. They're even colour coded. There's a colour coding available so I've gone from common which is black to the power on which is green and I've just shorted that out like that. Then the only other plug that you need to look at is one that says plus 12 volts. So between plus 12 volts and common your heater goes and between PS on and common a loop like that goes and that's all you have to do. You don't have to modify the power supply at all. Continuing with the power supply designed for a heater I've uh, had a few thoughts and I've come up with a couple of things I did remove all the wires except for the two that I need which is just the plus 12 volts and the common and I will state that I do have a tertiary qualification in electronics so I was quite comfortable in doing that as I suggested a bit earlier on when I showed you the other power supply you don't have to remove any wires you just have to bridge two over and you can then leave the power supply totally intact I have turned the heater around so that the air is coming up this way I will be using a small block of plastic that I had and some plumber's downpipe, 90 mil downpipe. So what I have done, and here is one that I had prepared earlier, I have cut some strips off the plastic, put some bolts through it, and I finished up with an arrangement like this. The plan is now to use some of the uh, garden sprinkle system riser tube that I had before, simply insert them over over these um, four bolts like that and there is a section of pipe that I have cut out and that will be mounted like that with this inside it and they will bolt straight onto that there and that will be my completed heating element. What I have done is I have used a slightly longer wire I wanted to drop the uh, drop the ability to heat to get to anything near 40 degrees so I've used I've calculated a length of 1.2 meters and that will give me an output of uh, 8.7 or just under 9 watts because I'll be winding the heating wire around around here I have a nut at the bottom to secure it at the bottom I'll have a double nut at the top to secure it at the top and those wires will come straight through here and there's my external connection board which will simply bolt onto there and these wires will connect to there and there so it will be just a single one off totally self-contained unit to secure the wires in place here I aim to actually make a knot at four points around here so that the wire is not just looping around but it will actually be tied off because the tying off the wire will increase the length I have calculated based on the diameter of that each each knot tie off will add an extra 22 millimeters so uh, I've added an extra 88 millimeters to compensate for that so the overall wire heating wire will still be 1.2 meters so that's the theory of it 
I'm about to put it together. I will quickly uh, do that now and I'll, I'll show you what it looks like when it has finished. And then uh, hopefully a bit later on I'll be able to show you the results of some tests. Okay, there it is, finished and put together. Just plugged it in. I've got one more wire to join up, but I have done a connection just to test. If you remember from our original calculations, I calculated that I would be drawing less than one amp. I think it was 0.7 amps. Uh, so I put a two amp fuse in on the top just in case there was a short or something happened then it would blow. So um, if you can see, I've connected my multimeter up and it is reading to me that's close enough to 0.7 amps. That's the project, done, finished. If it works, of course. Um, there's always that little provider, if it works. Oh, but I will let you know. Well, the project's finished, the trial is finished. And there is my power supply heater, the results of which I will show you very, very soon. But you can see I've made this one slight change. Being 90 mil downpipe that I used to actually contain the heating elements, I was just able to put a 90 degree bend straight on the end of that and that projected the, the uh, heated air straight up to circulate it around the hive and virtually straight on to the sensor. I had moved my thermocouple probe, as you can see I've just tacked it onto the end of my safety cutout and if you look here you can see that the maximum temperature reached on the maximum thermometer that I had sitting in the fridge there was just 36 degrees. I set my thermostat to 26 degrees, put the heater in, turned it on and as you can see it got up to just underneath that according to this, uh, this uh, data logger that I had sitting in the middle of the fridge and it controlled it pretty well. Then I turned it thermostat up to 40 degrees and as you can see the temperature rose up until it cut out by the safety cutout switch on the top cooled down cut back in again heated up and then cooled down but this time instead of going up to 60 odd degrees the temperature reached a maximum of 36 degrees now although that still may not be ideal it certainly uh, Short term, the hive would uh, would survive that, and uh, so hopefully, I'm supremely confident that I will never have an another overheating problem. In constructing this project, it came to me that other power supplies that are quite readily available now are power supplies that uh, belong to laptops. Quite often, the laptop will blow up, and the power supply uh, will be made redundant. Well. I'm just thinking this project, a normal fan like that straight out of a computer, a piece of 90mm PVC fits straight onto that, so there'd be nothing to stop cutting that off, mounting your heating wire in there and just using that as a simple fan and heater. Now a lot of those power supplies run at 19 volts so that would just mean a bit, a bit of extra length, a bit of extra wire. I think I calculated it uh, about two and a half meters would give a 10 watt output. That's a simple method for heating using the resistance wire method. And what you could do quite simply on the inside of the PVC, just three little blocks of uh, plastic. few holes in there, screw them to the inside of that and then wind the wire in a coil around there and the, and the heating elements and the fan run off the same power supply. That's the project over, I've learned a lot, I hope you have too. If I've saved someone some of the heartache that I've been through then I'm glad because that's, that was the idea of putting this together anyway, to share my experiences, show you the shortcuts on, uh, and hopefully you can learn by my mistake. So please have a go, let's get some more native bees out there and um, that's what it's all about. Thank you for watching.